Find the Power Fake by Daniel Walker in Make, Volume 17. To build the Power Fake, you need a PS2 or you can use a USB mouse, but it must have a scroll wheel with a rotary encoder, and we'll get more into that in a bit. And you need something that will spin. I'm using this RC car wheel and tire. And you'll also need a project box. The first step is to dissect your mouse, and we'll do that by removing the roller ball and then gently prying open the mouse. Uh, you may find one or two hidden screws that you need to get to. Then you need to inspect the mouse and make sure you have a rotary encoder and not an IR transmitter detector. Now in the case of this mouse, it's the wrong kind because, as you can see here, there's a couple of infrared detectors that control the scroll wheel. So this mouse has to go, and it's time to try another. Uh, this second mouse does have a rotary encoder, so this one will work. So remove the scroll wheel and remove the circuit board from the mouse body. We're going to relocate the rotary encoder, so it must be removed from the circuit board. There's three contacts and also usually a couple of soldered-in mounts for the rotary encoder. So we'll go and desolder those contacts and remove the rotary encoder from the mouse circuit board. We're going to be extending the location of the rotary encoder so it can attach to our new wheel. So we have to solder three wires to the original circuit board and then solder the rotary encoder to a small piece of circuit board and attach the other end of those three wires to the rotary encoder. Pay attention to which wire goes where so that it works properly. I decided to use the scroll wheel spindle as our axle between the encoder and our new RC wheel so I cut off one end of it and drilled a hole in the top of our hobby box. Now that'll go through the hobby box and then the RC wheel will be glued to the spindle and the encoder will attach to the other end of the spindle and then using some hot glue will secure the small circuit board in place on the hobby box top. The last step is to cut out a small notch for the cable and seal the box up. The power fake is done. Since I use a USB mouse, my PS2 port was available to plug in my power fake. And all I had to do to really kick it up a little bit was download software from this address, Volume Mouse. And I installed that, and now it's time to test out our power fake. The Volume Mouse software lets you configure different keys to do different things. So I programmed the control key, and by turning my power fake, I was able to adjust the transparency of my screens. With the Alt key pressed down, I could adjust my screen brightness, and the Shift key held down would control my audio volume. So that's how to make a cool USB device for your PC, the Power Fake. For other great projects, pick up Make Magazine at makezine.com. And we'll see you next week with another weekend project.